Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations in Horror, Halloween 2024. Uh, we are so excited to be doing uh, these special episodes during the month of October uh, and the Halloween season, uh, because as any great horror fan knows, this is one of our favorite times of the year where we get to explore lots and lots and lots and lots of different horror films, not just the Halloween franchise franchise films but also many different types of horror films out there and explore all the different subgenres of horror i know if if you're all like me and you like to do your 31 days of halloween you're watching a different horror film every day until the big night mm -hmm. uh <laughs> so i'm actually hoping that the, the the movie we're discussing today is one of those 31 days of Halloween films that you're watching. And if not, uh, I hope you've seen it before. And if you haven't, you need to take your butt out there and go watch it. It is Apollo 18. Yeah. 2011. And bro, hey, who's behind me and who's uh, doing Who's my, behind the action here? <laughs> doing my special guest tonight is uh, Jim Adams. We want to welcome Jim Adams back. Um, and we are doing Apollo 18, which is a rarity because we haven't done many found footage films. Um, so I was going to ask if you'd done a found footage film yet. Uh, we have done, uh, I've, we've done at least one, I think. Oh, that, okay. Maybe Paranormal, Paranormal Activity. activity. Yeah, well, there you go. Right. That's that's probably one of the most famous, <laughs> other than Blair Witch, which started it all. Yeah, we haven't done that. All one. I know is when I think Halloween, I think Apollo eighteen. Man, no, no, <laughs> no. I'm with you. I I I will watch a different different genre of horror film all through October. I love this time of the year, and all these streaming services, you know, cooperate. So you you have no shortage of material to find. You don't, and I, I am sad to say that I am not keeping up with my thirty one days of Halloween this year. Uh, because we're do, too busy recording episodes for the show. So oh, that's true. I, I've got to say, yeah, it's sort of the same. I've got my own podcast. It's it's real. And we, I'm doing the same thing. Special, special movies for you know for the Halloween season. So it, it keeps you busy. <laughs> uh, but um, I think I can't remember. So you have to uh, 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 forgive me if I get the the facts wrong. But when this came out in 2011, I don't think there was many found footage films that took place in space. Um, no, so no. In fact, um, I vividly remember this because 2011 is when the tornado destroyed my house. Mm. So this film came out or they were starting to um, uh, you know, I was taking care of my mom at the time. This is back when mom was still alive. They, and we were in the house when it got destroyed. So at this point, we were living in an apartment. And fortunately for me, the apartment was like half a mile from the big movie theater in Cartersville, Georgia. So it was great. We saw a lot of movies. This summer getting the new house built and uh we had gone to see uh puss in boots <laughs> so mom wanted to see that and i said yeah that looks sort of cute i want to go see that i like i like 3d animation and they had a trailer for this movie and okay. uh, i mean she's getting ready to leave you know because you know, her movie's over and i'm seeing this trailer and i'm going oh my god I've got to see this movie. <laughs> I mean, because I didn't know if it was real or not. I thought, you know, they really sort of got me going here a little bit. You know, I think I was a little traumatized from the old tornado incident, but uh, I was still looking at this thing going, man, you know, because was there a was there a secret mission that they uh, they launched <laughs> and it's just now coming out? And I was buying it all the way. Uh, now, by the time I went and saw the movie, I, I realized it was a found footage film, but uh, this is still one of my all-time favorite found footage films. I think they did such a good job with it. Uh, you know, I, really, I really loved the way they did it. You are the only person I've met who actually has enjoys this movie. I love this movie. Oh, yeah, I, most movie, I, most people hated it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 it's like they they realize that the the, the little creatures are rock creatures, and it's like, well, that's stupid. No, Why? Up <laughs> to the point where you realize the little. They're rock creatures. You, this movie really has a grip on you because oh, yeah, well, and they, they certainly did. You know, I, I think they, I think the he was the uh, the director was influenced by the face huckers at uh, you know in Alien because they had little tentacles and they could grab a hold of you or whatever, or get inside of you and stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's some oh, there's some nasty stuff that goes along with this. Uh, I think they're great. <laughs> I think they're great monsters. You know, uh, I will agree with you on that because I thought it was really cool, cool monsters when I saw this at the theater. Because yeah. um, I, I, I saw this. It, so anyone, it, it, most of the people out there who's listening to this knows, and I'm a big found footage fan. So of course I saw this at the theater. Me too. Yeah. Know? 
Uh, and I was probably the only person who, no, actually, I believe that I was not the only person in the theater when I saw this one. Um, a lot of found footage films when I, when I went to go see them would either have lots of people in them or they would be completely empty. Yeah. I remember um, this one, this one was sort of sparsely attended. I mean, I'm a space geek, you so know, I, I mean, from, 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 from the Mercury, you know, program all the way. I mean, I followed every space, you know, mission that, that there was, you know, that, that they would televise. So I mean I was so so into it and I was heartbroken in 1972 when they announced that ah, we're not going to do it anymore. You know we got these three planned uh, 18 19 to 20 but we're canceling them we're not going to do it because we don't want to spend the money on it anymore and it was like oh man I could not believe it. I yeah. mean I was just you know during those during those years when we were when we had the the, the six manned landings I'm not counting Apollo 13 because they they couldn't land but uh but you know the six that did make it on there i mean it it was like this uh, uh superhero stretch were coming off of you because know, i'm a big comic book geek and it was just like wow i mean i couldn't turn around without finding a movie that i had to see yeah. so it was you know those were good times during those years and then oh, we're not gonna do it anymore now we're gonna just do the space taxi thing and it was like oh man come on you know you know i'm glad to hear that they're going back to the moon they, we, we will be going back and a couple of years anyway so and we'll figure out what really is on the moon <laughs> well i think that's when the real story then we'll find out oh man that wasn't just found footage that was for real oh my god <laughs> well i mean this this movie spawned you know conspiracy theories surrounding apollo 19 and apollo 20 and apollo 20 was the one that we supposedly landed on, I, covertly landed on the moon to investigate a a uh, a crashed spacecraft that we had discovered uh, from some of the probes or whatever and found an alien uh, woman up there that was in this one cr crash big you know on the dark side of the moon and uh <laughs> and 19 was one where where the uh the the spacecraft uh, and it, conspiracy guys if i get it wrong don't kill me i'm just giving you a thumbnail uh apollo 19 actually crashed on the dark side because of the effect this spacecraft this alien spacecraft had or whatever and so I, I got into that. I mean, there was all kinds of YouTube videos out for years about that. Uh, I, you know, you know, what was it? Trying to be totally legit, but you knew they were all bogus. But I mean, it was still that was entertaining as hell. <laughs> uh, the only thing I want to know about people living on the dark side of the moon are the Nazis from Iron Sky. Oh, absolutely. Now, I totally believe that that was a historical drama. Uh, one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Oh my god! And it's so funny that we started. When I saw that. I remember when I saw the trailer for that one. I went Nazis on the moon. I have got to see this movie. And then the <laughs> and then the sequel, which didn't get really any any of the publicity that the first one did, was actually a hell of a lot of fun as well. Hey, when are you going to see Hitler riding a dinosaur? I mean, I got a you know Hitler on a dinosaur. This is this is good entertainment here. So we'll have oh, to talk about god. this somewhere down the road. I, I love Iron Sky. Yeah, I'm a huge Iron Sky fan. <laughs> Oh, Mike, getting back to Apollo 18. But back to Apollo 18 now. Oh, yes, yes. So we've got uh, uh, the, yeah, we got the secret mission. Oh, my goodness. Well, first... yeah, it's, it's a secret mission. Uh, and the thing is, it, when I was rewatching it, I, it kind of gives me the feeling of like the original alien when they when um, the Nostromo is uh, everyone's woken up to explore yeah, um, yeah. The, 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 um, the planet. And without actually knowing why they stopped, they've been awoken and stopped, and that's yeah, just this just is. an emergency beacon, but they didn't know anything else other than that. Yeah. And this is a movie in which they're sent out to a secret mission before yep. they even know why they're going out there. Um, it's a. I think they. I think they find out just before they take off. I, I mean, I think I think they mentioned something about their. They're putting these gizmos on the moon. Yeah. It's like a that's, like a like a deterrent, Soviet deterrent. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That's the 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 subterfuge. But I kind oh, of yeah. That's the I watch it. I kind of think of oh, when they find the other um the other it, it was it Russians. I think there was Russian. Russian. Yeah, oh, yeah. That was the shocker. Uh, was that's that the, the Russians whole reason why they go there. <laughs> yeah, everybody was stunned. It's like, wait a minute. What do you mean the Russians landed on the moon? No, they didn't land on the moon. You know. The, yeah, they did. <laughs> so, so up until the point, it plays like a like you would normally see any type oh, of yeah, space yeah. exploration uh, footage. You know, a lot of home movies of them with their families and 
talking to the news people. And, yeah. you know, and, so and it yeah. feels authentic because it's some of the same type of footage we saw with real space. Absolutely. Uh, uh, space, uh, space, what do you call it? Uh, dab, missions. Space missions. Are right around. When I was rewatching it, I realized that I was like, oh, oh, these feel like other actual space missions and yeah. it feels authentic it doesn't feel like uh say the pyramid uh as a right. film, finished film or uh, as above so below don't get me wrong i love both those movies but oh, yeah. those don't really feel ever no, really no, feel no, real no, no you could very easily be fooled by this if you didn't know any better yeah and yeah. Uh, and, and it's amazed amazing to me because I, I didn't realize for the longest time i didn't really pay attention that the director of this film is Spanish. It wasn't, it wasn't an American. And uh, Lopez and, Gallego. Yeah, I was going to let you say that. Yeah, because I was going to just try. I all butchered over. it. Yeah, I know. But, but and then it was not only not only was he Spanish, but this was sort of like a joint Canadian uh, uh, film project. So a lot, a mm -hmm. lot of the, I think two of the three of the, the astronauts actors. This were were Canadian or British actors. Which is so yeah. funny because the one of the other reasons why I really wanted to see this is because I was a fan of Ryan Robbins, who plays yeah. Greg in this movie, because he was in one of my favorite shows at the time, which was Sanctuary. I Sanctuary, that's right. Dude, I love that. That's show. sort of a dead that's sort of a dead giveaway for folks who were fans of that show. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I wish he'd done I, well see, that's the thing is I don't know if he'd done any more than that because Sanctuary was a show I absolutely loved, and then I knew he, he was in this movie. So I was he like he had oh. done another short-lived television series too and i can't for the life of me think of the name of it i always remembered sanctuary because that, that one i watched oh that was and, and the other the other one didn't last very long and I, uh, i'm trying to i cannot uh <laughs> try to remember the name of it <laughs> i can't think of the name of it right now no nah, but yeah all... yeah he, he was the only he was probably the most recognizable actor uh, out of the three that you see because yeah. everybody else you know other than the other two astronauts um they're all voices. They're just voices. The mission just control voices. guy. So I mean, in theory, this is really just a three-person movie. It's a three-person film, yeah. Um, in a in a well, I guess it's not really confined so much. I would love to have seen how they did this. I do know that the producer Tamir Bergmermitov, I can never pronounce that dude's name. <laughs> I know, yeah. It's, uh, his names dude, are impossible. Oh god, it's so weird to try and say some of their names. Tamir yeah. Bergmermitov. <sighs> And the, the funny thing is, I actually love his work as a yeah. director. Uh, and when he, I realized that he had produced this, I was like, whoa, this seems different. Yeah. You know, it seemed a little bit out of out of nowhere. And um, the thing is, it because of the monsters in this film, it still looks and feels like a, a Burke Mamatov movie. <laughs> I I I hate I can't it. pronounce I can't pronounce it either. Yeah, I'll just say I uh, hate when I butcher. Timar. It's T Timar or whatever his first name is. Which is I, I, yeah, I always I always kept saying <laughs> Timur Beck Mamba Mamba. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean it's he's gonna he's gonna watch the he's gonna listen to our podcast and, and say Dead Kevin Powers butchered my name, but yeah, at least he likes my movie. movies. <laughs> Uh, which I do love. I love his movies. Now uh, we can talk about Jose David Montero because he was the cinematographer, and I thought the cinematography in this was great. You know, oh, oh yeah, it was good. I mean, it was so authentic looking. And again, you know, folks, I'm a space geek. You know, and again, so I mean, you know, I I, I loved the Apollo missions because usually they do a little television transmission when they're on the way to the moon. Uh, you know, and and you saw some of that in Apollo 13, um, in the movie Apollo 13 with the but I mean. Their the inside of their crafts looked very legitimate. Um, I know they were incorporating a lot of actual NASA footage. They you know they, they did pay uh, tribute to to NASA in this. Although mm -hmm. uh, I had heard or read anyway, not heard but read in in other film books that NASA you know said okay we're going to give you some footage, but that's all we want to do with this because they didn't really like the idea of what they were doing because you know because of the whole conspiracy thing. And all that, but uh, but they did cooperate a little bit with it. But I mean, it, it so really fun. looks so legitimate that you would not know that you 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 would be hard pressed. Uh, last time when I watched it, I watched it again yesterday, getting ready for the podcast here, and I specifically tried to look for things. Okay, is there anything where they gave themselves away? You know, th their their actual on the moon footage 
uh, with the astronauts it was shot in Canada at a soundstage in Canada. And it looked and it was like, damn, man, they really got this good. They did. Uh, it they did. really looked solid. So, so oh. now all of a sudden, all the people coming out of the woodwork saying, see, we never really landed on the moon. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick made the movie that uh, that they showed in 1969. It's like, yeah, 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 go eat it. <laughs> I, I, I think Stanley Kubrick couldn't have directed it because he would have been way too anal. It would have taken yeah. two years for them to finish right. the damn thing. Two years it would have been a lot longer than that. Oh my God! Yeah, I just, I, you know, I tell people, you know, that there, I, I have friends that still believe we never landed on the moon and stuff, and said. Get a three-inch telescope and go train it on the moon, and you can actually see the sites where we've landed. That three inches big enough where you can actually, you know, sort of sort of see where it's where where we scuffed up and left stuff up there and and all that. So you know, don't give me that crap. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, which plays into some of the aspects of the uh, the the movie itself when our three American astronauts come across the footprints and they're like, yes, yeah. You know, it's the story aspects like that that I really enjoyed about this movie when I was rewatching it because it's so subtle, yes. except for when the camera or editing specifically what wants the audience to kind of zoom in on a on a, on yeah, yeah. That moves. Uh, it it's like the the person who put the footage together, which they mentioned that someone put the footage. Yes, together. that's so right, they did. That. Yeah, yeah, they, I, no, they. I, I don't think they made any mistakes on this that I could see. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where some of the other found footage movies, you can't really believe certain aspects because you're wondering how anyone would ever get the footage to do some of the stuff that's in the movie. But well, the biggest, still. the biggest mistake that a lot of them make is they forget it's supposed to be found footage, so there's not going to be seamless segues and stuff. It's just like you know, the camera starts and stops. You know, when you're shooting stuff you know you've got to you've got to do it that way and and some of them get sort of artistic and it's like oops <laughs> you just gave yourself away yeah. you know <laughs> it's got to be all point of view stuff guys come on uh, yeah oh my god that's one of the things i hated about the pyramid the pyramid broke yeah. the fucking fourth wall I like all the place yeah. oh my god i hate um but this movie does an excellent job of not doing that no, it does. It's incredible. Um, I think some of the most intense scenes in here, in, in the subtlety, you mentioned the subtlety, uh, when they're on the moon, uh, the first time they go to sleep, and the little noises, mm -hmm. and, and of course, they've got the, you know, got the cameras running, because the cameras run all the time in those things, um, and something sort of brushes by the camera. You know, something's in there with them, it's, I mean, but it's, it's, it's not really overt, and it's just, it's really spooky. Mm -hmm. Um, and the one thing about this film, I've got, I've got to you know, give credit to, uh, Gonzalo and I'm not going any further with your name, Gonzalo, cause I don't want to screw it up. Um, That's smart. That, yeah, let's do that. the first time I saw this movie, um, I very quickly forgot that I was watching a movie. Uh, it, it really drew me in. I could feel the loneliness and the isolation mm -hmm. and almost the cold of being up there on the moon. I mean, and, and when I walked out of the theater after seeing this, I couldn't get over that feeling that I had throughout that film. And so however he did it, and maybe it was the realism of the footage or why, how he put his footage together. Uh, I felt all that the first time out. And I, I, I couldn't shake that for, for months and, until I got around to seeing the film again. Yeah. You see, and it was still there. Uh, you know, it just, um, yeah, you know, I'm sort of numb to it now because I've seen this movie. I don't know how many times I've lost count, but but I just I will never forget those first few times, that loneliness. And you know that the feeling that, you know, if something screws up here, that's it. It's not like you know the cops can come save your life or, or anybody could you know that's it. You know because nobody could ever get up there in time to save you. Exactly, um, you're, you're dead meat. And and I, he did a really good job of bringing that about. Yeah, uh, of that whole feeling is like, oh man, we are so screwed here. Well, that goes. You bring up something that for me plays up towards the very end when mm -hmm. Gray is t Gray is trying to figure out whether or not he needs to help his friend. Yeah, uh, yeah. in the shuttle is coming towards him, or uh, listen to the people on the other side of the radio who tells them not to do anything, or they're going right. to they're going to refuse helping him and. 
uh, you kind of like say, what, what, what do you want to do? You want to help your friend who you've been stuck in a little capsule for God knows how long yeah. you live your life with, or who do, or listen to the people on the ground who don't know what's actually going on because they can't see what's going or, on. Or do they? Or do they? <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's, and that's the part I wasn't really anticipating when I first saw this. Mm -hmm. I should have, because I should have seen it a mile away. Um, but really not until uh, uh, the, the one guy, and I can't think of his name now, gets into the, the Russian craft and is talking to the Russian, mm -hmm. the Russian deputy, of uh, whatever, deputy commissar of space or whatever. And, uh, and it starts becoming apparent. Uh, he, he patches them into the Def Department of Defense and, and, the, and the DOD guy. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. He knows what's going on. I mean, he, they knew about this. They knew about this Russian landing and that these guys got killed by something. Um, and I, I have not seen the DVD release with the deleted scenes, but there's some deleted scenes from this movie that I was reading that uh, were pretty gruesome. Like when they find the cosmonaut, uh, it's just a body without a helmet. You know, the, the, I mean, he's the head's there, but the helmet's gone. And you don't know the lander's there yet. You don't see that until later. Uh, it's just this dead body and the guy's without a helmet. And your mind just goes to town on that one. It's like, what the hell happened to this guy? You know? <laughs> you know, you know what? I'll have to uh, look up the uh, deleted scenes. I don't think I've ever seen the deleted scenes on the Blu-ray. And I'm uh, trying to, I, I thought it was on, I, I, well, I know that I, I know it was on the DVD, or from what I read, I, I haven't read about the Blu-ray. I know there's Blu-ray out there, but if you, if you, if there's a deleted scene section, there's a couple. They had a couple of alternate endings as well. Oh, I'll have to watch those. A little, those. little more gruesome as well. There was actually an alternate ending where Gray makes it back. He survives and makes it back, and they've got a scene where he was arguing with some Department of the Defense. Uh, you know, secretary or something about, you know, how could you do that? How could you send us to this? And they spill the whole beans about, yeah, we were going to, you know, we wanted you to get infected and come back with this thing so we could develop a bioweapon because the Russians are apparently are doing the same thing. Uh, you know, I'm glad those didn't make it into the film. I think it would have screwed the film up. Wow. Uh, it would just, it would have destroyed the movie. You know, yeah. Just, I love it the way they made this film you know, without, without all that extra stuff. So uh, I, th I think they had just what they needed in there to. Well, you know, I, like, the last the last 10 minutes of this film are, are like some of the best minutes in, in a movie I've ever seen. It's the I mean, you talk about edge of the seat stuff, just nonstop. I mean, it's it's and you really you don't know where it's going to go. You're uh, really not sure where it's going to go. You know, the only thing I can tell you. Over is when I saw the ending and uh, I can't remember which one, uh, the name of the, which uh, astronauts in the other shuttle. And all of a sudden anti-gravity kicks in and all the rocks start floating everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was I, Ben. I think it was Ben was the one that was. Ben. In the I was. Yes, it was Ben. Oh it was Ben. God. Yeah. I, I was not just, expecting that when I watched no, the No, I wasn't either. No, I thought, okay, he made it in there, you uh -huh. know, and, and, and Nate is trying to bust his way in. Uh, and all that. I think there was a um, a version. One of the other alternate endings had a bigger rock monster. You know, all the ones we saw were little, yeah, relatively little, but a bigger one that shows up and smashes them into, smashes through the window of the Russian spacecraft Jeez. or whatever. But you know, see again, that would have ruined it too. That would that was like, oh no, no, that's, yeah, that would have ruined too, it. Too cheesy, too cheesy. So I'm glad they didn't go that route either. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I'm with you. When those things start floating up <laughs> as the gravity's disappearing and you're like, oh my God, there's about 50 of these things here. And then, you know, and he doesn't have a helmet on, so he's totally exposed. And it's like, well, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's and, and the thing is, I I think the actors do a great job pulling off this film. That yeah. That's one of the, the really, I think the, 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 um, the key elements for a found footage film, your actors have to be able to pull this shit off. Yeah, uh, well, I think I think Lloyd Owen, who is the guy that played uh, uh, Nate, the mm -hmm. big tall guy. I was like, he's a big tall guy because he was taller than anybody else, and he's the one that gets infected on the planet. Oh my God, the job he does with that, mm -hmm. how he, how he gets more and more infected, how this thing takes him over, and and it, what he does with his eyes and his mannerisms, uh, almost see like almost like pure living evil. Even though it's not meant to be evil, uh -huh. it's just he's being taken over by these these alien creatures. 
I, it's masterful. It's, it's some great stuff. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> especially in a time period when everyone was making so many found footage films. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were, they were really starting to come out quite a bit on this one. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that this one that sets this one apart from the other ones, other than the fact that it takes place in space, is also the fact that it uh, this, the, the visual effects are so good. Um, Very much so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I could bring up the pyramid again as yet another found footage film with bad CGI. And that's from producer Alexander Aja, who I absolutely love as a director. Yeah, yeah falls apart in the pyramid and you definitely know it's a CG mo- CGI master and you're taking well, and it. I'm looking, I'm looking at this and you know, the only CGI I, I suspect was there was the monsters. That, that was the, the little monsters. I, you know, because everything else was all practical and, mm-hmm. and some of those monsters could have been practical for all I know, but <laughs> yeah. it's seamless. It I mean, so I, good. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm glad they didn't depend on CGI, you know, or if they did, they did it really, really well. Um, well, <laughs> I also think that Tamir, it, it, after doing his uh, night watch, day watch, uh, <laughs> he he got the the hand of being able to help produce extremely effective visual effects on a yeah, very yeah. budget. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, these guys, you know, you know, they shot this for five million. I think it's five and a half million, something like that. Oh right wow, around there, five five point six, five point five. It returned on its on its first release, twenty six million dollars. That is a massive success. Yeah, for any any filmmaker, even in twenty eleven, you make five times your budget, you're looking good. I yeah. mean, you know, I'm surprised they didn't make more. Well, because I don't know how they could make another one of these. Oh, they could always go back to Apollo Apollo nineteen. Yeah, they just call something else, or they do the Russian oh, yeah. ship. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's that would have been now that would have been interesting. Yeah, to yeah, do with the yeah. backstory of the Russian ship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, if <laughs> I guarantee you, if they hadn't gotten as much criticism for the monsters, I think they would have done a sequel to this. Um I, I read some of the some of the critics that were, you know, really bad to this film, and it was like, yeah. like you know, again. Did they watch the same movie I watched? Because I mean, it was just like some of their criticisms were so ridiculous. It, they were. Uh, I remember I mean, the you know, it was, Oh, it's slow and dull. It's what? What movie were you watching? I didn't think it was slow or dull. You know, and there was one one positive review that commented on especially the ending, you know, the final minutes of the film and how exciting they were. But it was like, I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be action all the time to be a, a good moving film. This film, the story dragged me in. And, mm-hmm. and it held on to me, and you really wanted to know what was going to happen to these guys. Yeah, because you know, you know, if, if something screws up, they're not coming home. Except for Gray, you know, the guy, you know, the guy up there that, that's orbiting. Uh, you know, the one, <laughs> the, the um, um, uh, was Ryan Ryan Robbins. Yeah, character. Ryan Robbins. Um, you know, he's the only one that's got a chance of making it back. Of course, he he doesn't in this version because. I guess uh, when Ben gets taken over, uh, he's coming in too fast, and of course they can't they can't really link up because it's a Russian craft and a and an American craft, and he was going to have to sort of stop short and spacewalk in. Yeah, but, uh, he just ends up smashing into the uh, into into the other one, and the guy the DOD goes, "Well, wow, that saves us a lot of trouble." Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty harrowing at the you know when you when you look at it at the end when they talk about you know. You know, so and so died in a plane crash in a training incident, and uh, this guy died in the mountains of some some kind of accident, and and the other guy, you know, and it's like, yeah, that's sort of typical. Yeah, that's exactly what would have happened for real if this this was for real. This is yeah, what the yeah. Was and um, that's one of the things I actually really enjoyed about this film is that not only does it feel like you know someone, a real person would have taken the footage and did this. And then added on those taglines at the end of what yeah. the official report right, right. that the three uh, astronauts were. Um, it's so often that in these found footage films that you get one of those immediate cutoffs. At yeah, the end. yeah. Um, like what happens in Devils Do, and I think it happens in... Yeah, they don't really close the door. Yeah. Um, 
another bad one. Phoenix Forgotten. Oh my god, that was horrible. Uh, I, I I never made it through it. <laughs> and that one was produced produced yeah. by Ridley Scott. And you didn't think you wouldn't think. I know. I know. I, I I was very disappointed with that one. Um. Yeah. There was a whole bunch of it. it, it I think the criticisms on, on a lot of found footage films are the way that they end, the abrupt ending. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is one of the few that has an abrupt ending, but it also has a tag. Well, on. yeah, no, they they but they 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 seal up. I mean, they you know they they don't leave any loose ends, you know. So it's like, yeah, okay, this is what happened back on Earth. You know, this is oh yeah, these guys you know they were, in, you know, because they, they couldn't tell their families in the beginning they were going on a space mission. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, they even mentioned it says, like, you know, when they were doing the interview, the behind the scenes, or I mean, you know, as part of it, the, the interview for Nat with Maybe. NASA saying, Yeah, I can't. It, he said, The only hard part is I can't really tell my family I'm going to the moon. I wish they knew that, but uh, you know, maybe when I get back or something or other, you know, and, and it's like, So, uh, yeah, that's why the family goes, Yeah, they thought they were just going out of town on some kind of you know, that's the military, they're always calling you to. Stuff yeah. out of town or whatever. Well, you know, he was going to bring back a space rock for his son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Th those things that are those things are, are are nice little subtleties that you catch after you've already seen the film. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about. Uh, is is there any elements of the film that you didn't like? There's something that you don't think was as successful as it could have been. Hmm. It's a hard one, isn't it? Boy, that's it. That is a hard one. Um, no, I was even thinking, you know, when uh, I think it was Ben uh, goes down into the crater where there's another cosmonaut dead down there. And of course, he can't, he doesn't have a flashlight. He's got to use the flash on his camera. So it's, mm -hmm. I love all oh, that effect just adds to the tension and all that. I thought that was a brilliant stoke because it's like, oh. hey, you see something. Gotta wait a minute. Then I see another thing, and you yes. never know what's going to pop out at you. <laughs> and and uh, but the only if I was going to be really really critical, you know, if I was one of those guys who's trying to pick apart the mm -hmm. science and all that stuff, it's like, okay, they made a big deal out of the fact that the suits weren't created for the temperature that probably is going to be down there at that at the bottom of the crater. Mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be so cold. It's you know, and uh, they sort of forgot about that. He was down there for quite a bit. Uh, but I'm giving them that because I just love what they were doing with the story with that little flash camera thing. It's like it was like that is so cool. I thought uh, that was brilliant um, too. I'll give I, I'll, I'll give you uh, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing about this one. This one is so effective compared to so many other ones. Oh um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and that the, the, there is for me, for me, there's not a moment that takes me out of the film. Um, yeah, it's kind of the opposite of like. Paranormal Activity, the very, very, very ending of the very first one, when they kind of show the demonic, I forget yeah. what it is, uh, the, uh, the main character, just for a second, yeah. kind of almost takes you out of the movie, because up until that point, it's like completely realistic. I can understand, if you saw the original, original ending, you can understand why they did that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's kind of like, okay, you know. Yeah, see, that, that the, par the very first Paranormal was the only one I really liked. Um, <laughs> And it had some really great moments in it, but uh, yeah, I, and I, I liked the ending of the. I saw the original ending, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, when it first came out in the theaters, um, and uh, I was still a little surprised that people were screaming and hollering for the movie, uh, you know, because it was like, okay, look, th those are really spooky scenes I'm seeing, but come on, guys, I, I guess I'm with the people that never grew up as monster kids. They were not. <laughs> but was, the people but still, who... I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that when the second one I did watch all the way through, but it was like. I've already been here. I've done this. You know, it was almost just a carbon copy. And I never, you know, in all honesty, I never saw any of the others. So it's like. Uh, we, we talk about paranormal activity films in, uh, in a previous yeah. episode. And I kind of told everybody, yeah, I like the third one the most. Uh, and then yeah, they the, have to go watch that one just from what you said about it. Yeah, uh, because they did from the, the from the, the main characters when they were kids. And yeah, that yeah. adds a little bit more sus suspense when there's yeah, children yeah. involved in it. And oh, of yeah. course, I like the marked ones. The marked ones uh, was just entertainingly fun. <laughs> um, the rest of them are, eh, the last one is really, eh. yeah, it's like, you know, Paranormal Activity 8. How much money can we make? You know, well, uh... I will say this, Jason Blum, <laughs> Jason Blum, uh, it says, I don't even know why I keep making these movies. 
<laughs> you know why? Because you know you, why? Because you're making money off of them. That's well, right. the thing is, if you didn't make it and make the money, someone else would. Because That's you, right. don't, yeah, you know, That's you right. gotta do it to, to try and keep everything together. And stuff. <laughs> I understand, but I don't know why I'm making this. Yeah, right. Yeah, because you're right. <laughs> I think there's there's the, with the, there's probably eight fucking paranormal activity films, and I've still not seen the Japanese one yet because it hasn't been released here in the states. I have not. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. Yeah, but, uh, but for Apollo 18, who, which is a genuinely great found footage film in my opinion. yes i think it i think it is i i'm i'm real close to saying i think it's the best one i've ever seen there's a couple up there i really really like one that we're going to do down the road here uh which i can't that, that was the world war ii one uh, uh frankenstein's mm -hmm. army which i yeah. really love um because again it was one that i watched to see if they made any mistakes and <laughs> nope they shot it like they found like it was real found footage they didn't yeah. make those you know mistakes that a lot of them do but this one just i don't know always rings true with me i liked the blair witch project mm -hmm. um and and i uh the only thing that i i hated about that was when it had its uh, uh premiere at, down here in atlanta at the terror theater the uh the guy that wrote the article about it for the ajc mentioned oh yeah and heather o'donohue and so and so they were in the in the lobby when everyone came out i went what wait a minute they're supposed to be dead. I, I had bought it all the way up until that point. And I was like, oh, you just screwed it, man. Now, now I've got to go to the theater and see it knowing this is a fraud. You know, I thought it was for real. I, I saw the documentary on Sci-Fi Channel, totally yeah. bought it, you know? And that, oh, I, I, I never forgave that writer for doing that. I said, no, how could you write that? For God's sake, that's the whole, you know, that was the whole marketing genius that those two guys had that's why the movie made so much money but and and, and uh, it, it's so weird that with this genre subgenre that some of them can be so effective to audiences and some of them fall flat on their asses yeah um, yeah you know blair witch project and paranormal activity blair in my opinion paranormal activity is like rated g compared to most other ones yeah uh, but both of these films were effective for general audiences because yeah, yeah. people who don't go see horror films went to go see these two films That's and true. they were affected by them. Apollo 18 didn't have that same crossover appeal. I don't know why. I I, I would have thought you know, that you were people got, tired, space... people got tired of the space program after a while. You know, after we landed That's on the moon, moon, you know, after the first couple of landings on the moon, and we saw it represented a little bit in Apollo 13. Where they were showing the uh, the little uh, the little TV show they were doing from outer space, and then uh, you know the the wife of uh, Jim Lovell realized that the guys there at Mission Control were watching a baseball game, so that it wasn't on all the networks like the others had been. It was just sort of you know regionally done. You know, oh. people just stopped watching them. You know, they just stopped hey, right. Yeah, we, we've been on the moon. Yeah, we've been on the moon. You know, six times and. Oh yeah, big deal, you know. And it was like I never got tired of that. You could not land on the moon enough for me <laughs> to get to the point where it's say it's just just another walk in the park. No, it was, uh, you know, I was just so into that into the into the space program. So, but I think that may have been something like like that, you know. When was when was this? Twenty eleven is for Apollo eighteen. Oh wow! Okay. I was trying to remember when space movies and TV shows were popular, and it was at the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, because that's yes. yeah, yeah. 13 and from the Earth to the Moon, which was freaking brilliant. Oh, what a great, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I went to I went to uh, high school with the gal that produced most of those episodes, Lily Feeney Zanuck. Uh, the, yeah, the, she's a high school I, uh, high school mate. I think by 2011, people just didn't care about the. Uh, I it. it you know, all we were basically doing were, you know, we had this shuttle missions. We were launching at, you know, we we're launching, you know, um, satellites. Uh, you know, they launched the Hubble, then they had to go back up and repair it because they screwed it up. Uh, they were just starting on, you know, some primitive versions of what is now the ISS. You know, you had the mirror, which was like, huh. a, <laughs> I don't know if it was as bad as what was portrayed in the movie Armageddon, but it was like, you know, sort of like a hunk of junk. Yeah, but I mean, you know, but it was just like, you know, it was like, uh, you know, there wasn't anything exciting that we were doing oh. out there. 
you know, might I'm be... ready to, you know, I was ready to go to Mars. It's like, if you're not making a move to do something to get us to Mars, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. come on, guys. You know, we landed on the moon more than 50 years ago. And oh. we still haven't gotten any farther than we did back then. I mean, it, oh, it's so frustrating. Uh, you know what? I think the 2000s were, yeah. I don't think anyone liked space movies until Gravity came out. And what the one that, that was uh, a good movie, yeah. The one with uh, the, 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 the Jason Bourne, the one I have not seen yet, which is why I can't think of the name. I, of the I have not seen that one yet either, too. Yeah, I, I know the one, you, the, I think it's the last one. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where the Martian, the Martian, uh, yeah. which were extremely popular. I don't think people were into space uh, movies. Or I don't think so. Yeah, I just you know, uh, there's a little bit of excitement brewing around a, a potential Mars mission by SpaceX. I think it was space. I think it's Elon Musk is going to mm. is trying to go and get. Yeah. Well, um, in the two thousands, the early two thousands, they had the two Mars movies that tanked horribly, missing to Mars and. Yeah. The other one I liked, which I can't think of the damn name for it. Uh, uh, the red, it wasn't the Red Planet, but it was Red Planet. Yeah, yes, Red Planet. Was red it Red Planet? Planet? Yeah, yeah, it was Red, red Planet. Planet. Was that the uh, one with Val Kilmer? Because yeah. I like the one with Val Kilmer. That I love that movie. movie. No yeah. matter how bad it is, that's a guilty. That one, Bill Paxton. All, yeah, I love those. Yeah, I thought that um, one was the best of the two. The other one was boring. Yeah, it was boring. I rewatched that recently. I thought but the was Martian was the Martian was brilliant. Yeah, that was a great. Yeah, um, was a great I don't movie. think people cared about uh, space movies until uh, the, whenever really. Gravity and the Martian started coming out, which yeah, was yeah, after, yeah. after Apollo eighteen, which is yeah. probably what contributed to no one seeing it. It may, I guarantee you, the the horror fans went to go see it, and that's why it only made about twenty five million dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah. If it was, well, a, I would, I, you know, the, the trailer, and I went back and why I I had not seen the trailer. In 13 years, I mean, I saw the trailer at the ran at the movie theater, and I didn't see it again until tonight. I watched it about 15 minutes before I linked up with you for this uh, for this recording, and it was like, yeah, now I see why I went to see this movie because it was still a so powerful, that, powerful trailer. It was like, man, you've got to go see this movie. But, you know, but it. if you're not it, you're not into space, um, then it's like. That, well, yeah, but I'm not that really big into astronauts and all that stuff. I could see that kept a lot of people away, probably. Well, the other thing is that people who were the audiences were getting inundated with tons and tons of found footage films. And yeah, yeah. the thing is, because they were being produced for so little, they would turn into oh, yeah. profit and then disappear. Like yeah. I mentioned, Devil's Do. Uh, you had uh, The Gallows. You had all these movies that in, uh, when people think of this, oh, that movie tanked. Well, The Gallows made a shit ton of money relative to the budget because its budget was like a hundred, uh, yeah, I think yeah. 50 or $60,000. Uh, like it, it made like $10 million. When you start, start <laughs> thinking about that, you start realizing how profitable they were, which is why they kept making. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, uh -oh. Well, it's, like, it's like, that's why, you know, why networks do reality, quote unquote. I've got the air quotes going here because uh, there's no <laughs> such thing as reality TV, but reality TV because they're cheap to make. Well, and, and they I, return a lot of money. Yeah. And, the you know, all credit must be due to Jason Blum, who put out a shit ton of found footage movies. Uh, yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the other thing about Jason Blum is when they were popular, he actually bought a lot of found footage films. He yeah. didn't like. Yeah. The Gallows and a crap ton of the other ones were ones he acquired uh, because he was a young company back then. Blumhouse yeah. was young. Yeah. Um, they were buying movies for cheap, releasing them yeah. in the theater, and making a crap ton of mo money. Yeah. I can't fault him for that. No, I can't uh, either. That's going to sound without, without him, we wouldn't have some of the uh, found footage movies that we Agreed. had. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Yeah, I, I don't think Frankenstein's Army might might not have been made because that 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 came in a long a long time. You know, that's one of the more recent ones that have mm -hmm. come out, and, uh, and it's one yeah. of the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll agree with you on that. Uh, I had so much fun with that movie. It's Me too. <laughs> I know, we're going to do it. I mean, we're going to. I know we've we've got it on the on the boards somewhere. We're I am do. looking forward to rewatching that because I have not seen that one in a long time. To be honest, that's one. That's one of those that I'll just get a hankering for it about like once or twice a year, and then go looking for it because I, I just watch it on streaming. I don't have a copy of it. Yes, yeah, it's always easy. To, it's always easy to find, oh. and uh, it's just you know it's like 
oh god i gotta watch this one again yeah because there's there's certain scenes in there that i always remember he's got some memorable scenes in there mm-hmm. but, um, i just love the fucking monsters dude oh they're great the detail that went into designing mm-hmm. those oh my I god love the, i love the big pot one you know he's great the little the little pot that walks around you know, the little assistant <laughs> If you haven't seen the movie, you think I'm crazy, but no, watch the movie and you'll see that I'm not crazy. <laughs> so, uh, Joe, uh, what else can we say or what else do you have to say about Apollo 18? <laughs> I, I, I still think it's one of the strongest found footage films ever made. Mm-hmm. I, I, I put it very high up on the list. I can't, I, 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 I'm almost saying I, it has to be my number one, probably. I can't think of one that I, that I thought was done better than that one. Uh, just uh, the the artistry behind it and uh it just pulls you in so as long as you know you know if you really want to enjoy movies and i'm speaking to a crowd that probably doesn't listen to this show but i mean you know you've just got to let you know all sense of reality go when you go into a movie theater or sit down to watch a movie because they're not meant to be taken seriously for the most part they're, they're entertainment um you know that, that's what they mean by suspend disbelief you mm-hmm. want to sit there and pick it all apart because, well, that wouldn't have happened and that wouldn't happen. Why are you watching movies? You know, just g- go go hide in the basement and get online and harass people or something. But, uh, you know, these kind of movies, I, this one just really pulled me in. And, uh, you know, so you totally bought into the, you know, for an hour and a half, I could buy buy into the fact that this was actual found footage. Mm-hmm. There was some kind of weird conspiracy going on where the government was conducting these covert missions in outer space these black ops missions you know and, you know without it saying well you know if they launched a saturn V down there at cape canaveral wouldn't somebody notice you know <laughs> you know, probably light up the whole damn state uh but it's like look i don't care about that you know yeah you know <laughs> maybe they got a launching pad out in the middle of the desert somewhere who knows but uh you know i don't worry about that stuff i just um I, you know I, I just totally bought into it, and you can really have a lot of fun with this movie if you're able to do that. Um, and the thing is, I since I've watched so many found footage films, yeah. I have a really great appreciation for suspending my disbelief. Absolutely, if I can watch found footage movies uh, that like Willow Creek or exist that have to deal with Bigfoot or incident uh, was it incident at Loch Ness. That has to do with the Loch Ness monster. That's an intriguing one. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> Willow Creek's another one that's that's I, I especially like. Yeah, uh, I bring those up because those are a uh, lots of found footage films have been yeah. literally on just about everything. Right, right. So you have to suspend your disbelief in order to buy into the concept alone. Absolutely, yeah. And absolutely. I think if you can't do that, you can't enjoy a found footage film. No, no, you can't. I think that's the hardest thing for general audiences and the reason why something like Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity were success because, you know, Paranormal Activity, it's your own home. Blair yeah. Witch Project is just three college students. Well, Blair there. Witch was the first, you know. So, and the yeah, first. But, it's and, 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 you know, I pay credit to, I wish I can't remember the two kids' names, you know, they haven't done too Josh, well with some of the other Leonard. Films. Heather yeah. and Tommy Hugh, and oh my God, I used to know all three of them, and I can't think of the other. I guy. can't think of them. No, but it was like, but you know, they that was a brand concept they came up with. Um, the local guys from from Georgia here, they went to McEachern High School, uh, known each other, you know, since high school, and they came up with this concept of uh, it was all in the marketing, and then and then developed this whole found footage, you know, te- you know that was brilliant. It was genius. Mm-hmm. And they made a ton of money off of it. Mm-hmm. They really didn't need to make any more movies after that one. It made enough to uh, to do that. You know, I mean, you know, Blair Witch Two did not do that well. It wasn't that horrible of a movie, but I don't think it was it, either. It was, like, it was like, guys, no, you you did something very unique with the first one. It would have been better that you didn't try to do a sequel to it. You know, they wanted to do something those, different. Yeah, stand along with the guys who created a they created a genre. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, and they just didn't want to do the same thing with the sequel. Despite yeah, the fact yeah, yeah. that they hired a documentary filmmaker to make that's true. That's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't that, you know, that. And again, as a movie, it wasn't that bad, but it was, you know, the, the expectations were set so high for him because of what they've yeah. done with the first 
uh, they, you know, but I mean, they did do some successful television projects here and there and stuff. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like they were, you know, they're still, they're still around cooking. Yeah. And then they did, of course, the legacy before there was legacy sequels with Blair Witch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No one knew they were making it until it came out. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, but um, that's what my thing is with foul footage is, I, and I can, I've been able to suspend my disbelief very easily, which is why I can enjoy all these movies. Um, even movies like Devil's Do, which isn't a good movie, but there are aspects of it that I really, yeah, enjoy. yeah. Uh, Phoenix Forgotten, the concept I yeah. like, I just didn't like the execution. And that's, uh, that's the case with a lot of these. It's the execution because the execution. Um, I, think, I, I think found footage films are probably, and you're a filmmaker, I, I'm a struggling filmmaker. Mm -hmm. It's probably the hardest type of movie to make. It is. To, get right, to really get it right. It's, you and know, so you many have, people think it's you so have got to be on your game to get yeah. this thing right. It's not easy. And there's so yeah. many bad ones out there. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, you know, a lot of people out there saying, okay, just, you know, get the guy with the camera and, walk around with us and do all this handheld stuff and it, you know that will make it fly no it's not that easy <laughs> it's not that easy guys uh, you've got to visualize how this is going to look in camera yeah um, if, if it really is real actual honest to god found footage well i will agree with you this is on my top in my top five favorite yeah, found footage yeah. films of all time i put this up there with blair Witch, which i've oh, seen yeah. way too many times and it is above so below is uh, another one of my favorites uh, good one. i would put campbell holocaust but that's not mostly found footage it just has aspects of found no footage. no no well the most fun with that i got i did get the chance to meet the guy who directed it and talk to him for quite yeah a no he's a fascinating that. guy he's a he was amazed that I, he actually knew someone that had watched the movie ever you've seen this movie was, oh yeah absolutely man and just you know i was like his best friend for that afternoon <laughs> uh but but as part of our conversation in the horror halloween celebration this october i'm glad we were able to sit down and discuss a found footage film um yeah, absolutely that it was actually one that we both enjoyed and we actually both think is an actually good one. And yeah. uh, we didn't do an episode on a bad one. Oh, but by the way, I also forgot that we have done uh, an episode on The Bay, uh, which was another oh, film. Oh, The Bay, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we haven't done many of these. Uh, yeah. We did Paranormal Activity and I think The Bay. Uh, yeah. I'm, I, just I, looking for, I'm looking forward to Frankenstein's Army. I, we're going to do that one in a few weeks. And uh, that'll be another one that's real high on my list. Uh, but I'm uh, I'm I'm hoping that when people listen to this, that they will go out there and find if they haven't seen Apollo 18 to go look and find Apollo 18. Yes, yeah. Um, also, and it's, it's easy to find. It's you know if you've got any kind of streaming service, uh, you know like Amazon or whatever, it's it's on a bunch of them. So yeah, it's it's pretty it. easy to find. I think I think and I think Tubi's got it if you don't mind the commercials, you know. But if you can watch it without the commercials, it's a lot more effective. Yes. And you really get more of a feel for it. I mean, I think with found footage films, you almost have to do that. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind, guys. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Uh, we also uh, want to thank you for joining us this uh, October. Make sure to check out all of our hunting uh, podcast episodes this month. Uh, we have several more to go for the rest of the month. We're Except to... for the ones I disagree with. And I will, no, I won't get into that right now. <laughs> 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 uh, remember to check out some of our previous episodes. If you are one of our our, uh, our frequent uh, flyers, you can check out all the other great horror films we've already discussed. Oh, great films. You guys have done some great films this year. Uh, and please make sure it, to like, subscribe, follow us on all those good things, and leave us a note of the films that you would yeah. like us to um, do in a future episode. We are always interested in knowing what our audience would like to hear us have a conversation in horror. About. Absolutely. I want to thank you, Jim, for joining us today. Oh, yeah. Uh, and everyone out there, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, we had a great time. Um, but again, have a safe Halloween this season. Uh, if you are going to go out there, have a safe Halloween. Make sure that you give plenty of candy to the little kitties out there. Oh, yeah. From all of us here at Something Wicked Entertainment, we wish you a great Halloween month. Everybody out there, have a good evening. See you later. Bye. Conversations in Horror is a Broken Lighthouse Pictures production produced by Kevin L. Powers, executive produced by Kelly A. Inoka, and originally filmed via Zoom technology. 
Conversations in Horror is hosted by Kevin L. Powers and co-hosted by various horror film lovers and filmmakers. To learn more about Mr. Powers, please make sure to check out his Patreon page and other social media platforms. Conversations in Horror is copyright 2024, Broken Lighthouse Pictures Productions.